Oh, God. Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Jesus, Lord Liefeld, help me. X-Force number five. We are rapidly approaching the end of the work of Liefeld that I still consider interesting and kind of good, despite the fact I can still see a thousand things wrong with it. I like his old school organic approach when he inked himself with a dip pen. He used to use the Hunt 102s on this type of shit. And then from what it seems like he says, he ran into what Stephen Platt was doing and Stephen Platt was using technical pens. And now this is all Liefeld uses and it looks atrocious. But this stuff, I still kind of like and there's still plenty of things wrong with it. But there's also another very interesting component to this book that I remember at the time when I saw it, I just thought that, oh, Liefeld's getting better. But then I swear, I, there's no way to know this for a fact, but I, I goddamn know it. Someone else was doing some penciling work for him, and I know exactly who it was because I know his artwork. We'll get to it. Starts off continuing from the uh, the crossover with McFarlane, with the Juggernaut and Spider-Man. At the end of it, um, Deadpool ran off with Juggernaut and Black Tom Cassidy. And holy fuck of fucks. Look, Black Tom Cassidy, once again, as we saw on issue three, I believe it was, he did a, he did a page where there was two panels of the same character, this black Tom Cassidy. In the lower panel, he had his beard and mustache like he does. But in the panel right above it, he had no beard or no mustache. Which is like beyond stupid. But look here. No beard, nothing. No beard. Like, he can't even remember that this character has a fucking beard and a mustache. It's so stupid. How dumb do you have to be? To just draw the most basic character trait and keep the characters on model. I guess this is a guy sitting in a chair. They call him Tolliver. Um, if you guys know, for those of you who watch this, who was this guy? I remember this is some mystery at the time that Deadpool's working for him. He had some kind of secret agenda of something. And I never, ever did read anything that ever explained who or what. So I would like to know. But um, they're... Uh, Let's see, I'm just reading some of this text. Who cares? I don't need to read this shit. Cut to a whole other scene titled Under the Magnifying Glass. So we got evil cackling giant teeth from bad guy, sort of a city scene, an interesting color palette. Now the colors say Murray and Witterstatter. Who the hell is Witterstatter? Murray. This is Brian Murray. He's done some coloring. He drew Supreme, the first couple issues, for Rob Liefeld when he goes over to Image Comics. He is amongst the worst colorists I've ever seen. I just don't like his color choices. It's odd here. I don't hate it. It gets way worse in, as it goes on in the future. But Brian Murray, I know what his artwork, look, artwork looks like. And it's kind of like, again, a Liefeld type clone, but filtered through an artist who has um, attention to detail and growth more than Liefeld ever had. So there's some stuff later on in this book, because it just says here, Rob Liefeld, plot and art, implying he does pencils and inks. I believe absolutely 100% that the inks in this book are all him, because it all looks like his hand for the most part. But then there's some stuff where I'm like, this is... Liefeld's inking maybe but this is someone else doing like finished pencils over maybe his rough layouts we'll get to it um random dude walking down the street weird you got a big fat ass and a weird standard Liefeld body it just looks so weird um he shows up and you got toad and the blob Nothing stops the blob. You guys remember that from that cartoon? I'm sorry, I shouldn't do voices. But, um, or is it from that old... Sh anyway, who the cares? The blob is a ridiculous character because he's just a big fat man that um, you can't move him or some shit like that. I gotta say, I kind of like this face. This big, long face. This kind of cartoony. The evil look. Even the big cackling teeth. I kind of like it. You got a big fat guy and a little short scrawny guy. Um, I don't understand, like, is he sitting on a table or something? 
It's just really weird. But even this face and this inking, it doesn't look like stuff that Liefeld does. It looks different. It looks kind of good. And I think this is Brian Murray's hand on there somehow. And there's some other pages that we get deeper into this where it's extremely obvious that it's Brian Murray. Brian Murray, Because once I've looked at his artwork on other books and I'm like, where have I seen this before? It was in here. Anyway, the blob grabs this dude because he's he's someone important. Um, hold him up, holding him up against this wall. I like how this guy's apartment is just like, looks like this dilapidated shithole with cracks on the wall. It's just because Liefeld can't draw no goddamn thing. Um, and then his version of the toad here with like the yellow teeth and this big Joker grin, it kind of works for me. I kind of dig it. I think it works here. I think it works here. So I was still on board. I am kind of buying it and I don't mind his layouts. I don't mind his storytelling. I can follow the story. He grabs him, puts him up against the wall. They're threatening his girl. They're saying some evil guy, evil bad guy shit. I just did an issue recently of Berserker number two by Dan Fraga, who's clearly a better drawer in a lot of ways, but his storytelling was just terrible, terrible, terrible. Liefeld could kind of make a story. I never struggled to understand what I was looking at as far as like where the characters are moving and what they're doing, even if the drawings are just beyond ridiculous. It looks like the blob is about to like make fucking this guy like suck his thumb off or something like that. He's like, swallow it. You'll like it. Get into it. And they're, so they're calling, they're saying this guy is, he's Dr. Lycos. What was his name? I'm sure they said it here somewhere. somewhere. Um, do, 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 do. Just Dr. Lycos, whatever his first name is. But he's this giant lizard creature called Sauron, where we heard that name from. But they're trying to get him to come back to the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. And look at these weird lines in the background. It looks like a Sharpie. It looks like something that was drawn small and then blown up. It's really stupid. And then you got... Gideon, who's in a suit, he just looks like Professor X with a big blonde ponytail. And it's like they took this face and then just, I don't know if they shrunk it down there or blew it up here because he's got kind of glitchy lines here. This is the extent of Liefeld's like mountains and clouds that he could do. He don't give a fuck. This took him five seconds to draw. I got to draw gritted teeth characters here. Let's go. And then this is another page where artwork wise, it's starting to feel not entirely life there's tons of his stuff this weird anatomy but this face here that face there um these faces it doesn't look like liefeld stuff it's got less bullshit lines all over it and kind of a there's something there i just i don't believe that this is liefeld's hand exclusively i feel like brian murray was in here doing some penciling work and it, i totally think that's plausible because once Liefeld kicks his ass over to Image Comics, he brings with him all his homies and he puts Brian Murray, who's colored his work, they put him to drawing Supreme. So uh, he's got a relationship with them. So clearly it's a possibility. This giant shot, look at, look at these feet. He just kind of draws like a pointy shape and throws some lines on them. Backgrounds are barely existent. They're here, sort of. Um, but I just, I don't feel like this is... Just life felt. There's something else going on, and it gets more pronounced as we go on. But they're talking about what they want to do. The team's getting into some shenanigans, and they're making it look like they're the bad guys, and they don't think they should be looking like the bad guys, and whatever. Um, again, this is not exactly life felt. It's kind of different. I feel like that face, that face, that face. It's just, there's someone else doing it. And then these pages feel like they're hyper rushed. Like these are very basic drawings. And then the coloring, like throwing yellow on the background and some kind of blue tone on the figures. It, it's really, it reads though. I get it. They're talking. I kind of follow the flow of everything. I don't understand where there's all these ridiculous, like cross hatchy lines in the background. It doesn't describe anything. But doesn't feel completely life felt. So he's kind of hands off on this issue. This little bit of two-page story of Warpath, he's like running. There's some interesting, like, he's talking about, I guess there's a, 
No, he's talking about instances in the past where Native Americans were slaughtered and he's Native American, of course. So he's just kind of like re just kind of going through his mind about what he's going to do, how his family was killed. He's going to get revenge on them. I think visually this could have been really awesome. It's kind of interesting with him running with the moon, but the coloring, like life was just throwing these little lines in the background here. And so the colors decided to just color some lines over the lines and somebody thought that that looked good with some more interesting coloring put like a night sky dark stars the glowing moon behind them it's such a slack ass way but i still kind of like i got it and i followed it and i kind of liked it. he's running he's angry he's working out his frustrations he's up on the peak of a mountain he's just screaming you know getting out his frustrations he's yelling splinter Little turtles reference, sorry. Weird fucking looking moon. Screamy face. I kind of liked this drawing. Like the coloring, the way that he's just like, he's just got his rage and his feelings and his passions and he's feeling it. I I don't know. I kind of dig the idea. I kind of sort of like the execution, but man, it could be a lot better drawn. Um, and then this weird background stuff. These just, what 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 is going on? Cut over to Shatterstar. He's in some new outfit. He's wearing some suspenders. He's training. He's fighting these little Pokemon balls, I guess. This feels more Liefeld. I think he was into these a lot. I think Liefeld was kind of into the artwork here. I think he was definitely into these Shatterstar pages. Pages, Just draw a guy running around swinging swords and muscles and tights and angry, screamy face. This feels very Liefeld. This feels like his hand is all over it. So I feel like he was interested in these pages. Little laser ball, Pokemon ball, shoot at him. He blocks him with the swords, chops him in half, points his hand and shoots, blows it up. They drop to the ground. This is more of the kind of like inking and the cross hatching that still feels Liefeld, but also not. I feel like more Brian Murray is touching this. Um, you can barely make any sense of the backgrounds with these weird colors. Like if these little blown up Pokemon balls are on the ground, He's way too short here. He needs to be like up higher for the perspective to be right. Whatever. We come back to the scene where Farrell shows up. Now, there was a scene in the previous issue, I think it was, or the one before that. I think it was the previous issue. Um, no, X-Force number two. Right. This is issue five. Right. Where they had a training session and the entire X-Force team was to hunt down Farrell in the forest. And she got way too into it. Her bloodlust took over and she got really violent and came a hair's breadth away from killing uh, Cannonball. She ripped his guts out. And so she's like, hey, um, she's kind of flirting with him. This was another character trait that I thought was kind of interesting about Farrell that I don't know how far it was ever explored where she's like a cat where she want to claw your face off one minute and then the next minute she wants you to pet her and stick your fingers in her or something because she she wants to play around. And so she's kind of flirting with him. She's like, we need to continue our wrestling match. And he's like, I have no interest in fighting you. She says, who said anything about fighting? I said wrestling. See you around, lover boy. So she's over here flirting with him. Like she wants to get up on Shatterstar's junk. <laughs> Which, I mean, let's see that. Let's do it. What a terrible looking hand. What a terrible, like, who gives a shit about the accuracy of this double-bladed sword? What is with the coloring on the two blades? It's just so weird. And this is another interesting thing. Shatterstar, like, look at his hair. And then he's got a ponytail. And then Shatterstar takes off this stupid, like, football helmet padding thing. Or his boxer padding thing that he's wearing. And he just instantly gives himself a haircut. And he's got, like, a flat top it was so weird to me even at the time to see him out of this thing where's his little braided little his little braids that hang down they're not there where's his long ass ponytail now, i guess you could say they're back behind him so he's got the world's most wicked sweet like 90 10 mullet you know way long in the back way short up front really stupid so again i i, I feel like the energy and the action and the flow of these pages is interesting, but man, Liefeld takes every fucking shortcut. I was like, where's her other leg? One leg coming down here. I guess her leg could be bent behind her. I feel like Liefeld just forgot to draw it. He forgot to, he forgot to draw beard on the guy up here. It's entirely conceivable. 
he uh, forgot to draw her leg there. Now, this right here, I hope there's some of you out there that know Brian Murray's artwork, and especially on those early issues of Supreme, to see what I see. The story is, is Siren up here, she's observing the thing that was going on down here between Shadowstar and Feral. Cable comes up, and they're having a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart about their what they're doing, what they're what they're going to do. This eye and the lush inking on the eye eyelashes that is not Rob Liefeld. This face that is not typical Liefeld. Like it's his inking. I bet it's Liefeld's layouts. Brian Murray doing some finished penciling, and then Liefeld inking on top of that. But this right here, this body. This anatomy, the inking on the muscles, this is 100% Brian Murray. I'm not saying the inking is, but I kind of think it is. But it could be Liefeld's inks. But that is completely someone else. That is not him. That is not Liefeld. Because it kind of looks good. Look at that face. Does that look like anything like a Liefeld face? The way that you know that he looks? Like the same guy who penciled... Like faces like this, or this cable face there, that's a Liefeld cable face, did not draw that face there. And this, I remember thinking that this girl's face was kind of okay, it's kind of flat, but this picture of cable, I was blown away by. I thought the angle, the highlights, the yellows, um, and then the cross hatching on it to indicate shadows on this side, and then highlights from the glowing computer screens on this side. I was like, God damn, Liefeld's just, he's really got, he's hes trying hard. And I think the I irony is he was not trying at all. This is Brian Murray right there. His penciling and Liefeld's inks. I bet you 100% that's what that is because it kind of looks good. It's got some form to it. These highlights and all these shapes like the shadows here where the crease in between his nose and his cheekbones, his chin sticks out, his Adam's apple and those the arteries in your neck. It's it's too there's a there's an indication of three dimensionality to it. And I believe this is again, Liefeld does the layouts, gives it to Brian Murray, and he penciled the shit out of it. He was doing really good feeling inspired, and then Liefeld inks it. I I bet you that's what it is. Um and then again this face it's just, it's just, it's too good. It's, she's too pretty. That is not a Liefeld female face. She looks attractive. Eyes, nose, mouth, beautiful. So this whole spread, I remember looking at this and at the time, way back in when, I don't want to double check. This is December of 91. I remember looking at these and saying, like, something is different. And now I completely understand what it is. It's because Liefeld had a lesser hand in it and someone else did. Then we get back to more shitty drawing. That's very Liefeld. A table. People are talking. They're trying to talk about what are we going to do with X-Force? How are we going to do whatever we're going to do? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Who cares? Move on. Um... More of the same, talking, government talking, buildings. We are back to Toad and the Blob. And they got Dr. Lycos upside down and his girlfriend. They stripped him naked. So they're cackling like, we need to drain the girl's life force and interject it into the guy so they can get Sauron. So that's, I guess that's how this Sauron lizard dinosaur creature works. I don't know anything about the character. The only time I've ever read him was in here. So they flip the switch and they start sucking the life force out of her. The energy works. And then this little, it's a shitty drawing, but I buy it. I get it. Face, mid-transformation, more lizardy, And then you go on and, you, oh, letters, pages. Usually these are at the end of the book. Like, okay, that's weird. That it, oh, there it is. Oh, fuck me. Why couldn't they just put this in order? Got to turn it sideways. And then you can't really see what's going on here. But then here's a lizard guy with his capes folded up. And he's like, do you hear me, you soft pink bags, bags of rice paper flesh? Sauron is back. And then Toad is like, indeed. And then you see like the, the dead eyes of the girl whose life force they just drained. I kind of don't mind that. that. That works. I like it. I really do. Um... It's funny that he's still in his like regular pants or whatever. It's kind of like the Hulk or something like that where he turns into a monster but his pants are still on. But here's the funny thing. Oh my God. 
Liefeld is such a fucking idiot. The guy is not wearing any pants. He's wearing like this steel underwear. Like they got this metal clamps on his arms and his ankles to hold him up. And they got to put like a metal diaper on him so we don't have his fucking cock hanging out, which actually would have been more interesting to see. He's not wearing any pants. There or there, he gets turned into Sauron. He's wearing some pants. Like you could see a seam. It's, so, <laughs> it's laughably stupid. And these are the books of Liefeld that I like. Man, is he just beyond ridiculous. And that's the end of the issue. So the story, I kind of don't mind. And I guess that's all I can say. And again, these are the parts of Liefeld's history that I kind of dig. I like this cover. It's got that Liefeld vibe where he's inking himself and his little quirkiness that kind of works. But he's rapidly rushing out the door to go do Youngblood. And he's handing off work. And the thing is, is that he shouts everywhere. He said in an interview, like, if you saw my name on it, you better know I did the work and no one else did. He's a fucking liar. Just say that you had to bring in some help because you're on a time frame and you had a big time crunch and you were getting ready to do Youngblood, but you had obligations you wanted to fulfill. And at the time, he thought he was going to do Youngblood and X-Force at the same time. Obviously, that didn't work out. Just tell the truth. You did not do everything. Unless there was some kind of like legal thing. Like if he put, like he had to bring on some other pencilers that they'd have to legally pay these other guys. So he just has to put in his own name and then maybe he just pay them out of his own rich ass pocket because he got a million dollars for New Mutants 100 and a million dollars for X-Force number one. So he's a rich motherfucker. He can pay a lot of cash for these guys to help him. So I kind of like it still. I like the story. I like where it was going. A lot of setup and X Force was interesting at the time and artistically it's you know it's it's Liefeld. Anyway, that's it. There's X Force number five. We're rapidly approaching the end of Liefeld's run, and um, we'll see how that all plays out. So thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time.